Okay, honestly, this thing shocked me. I hope you're doing well. My name is Chris Green, and this is the ARC Studio from IK Multimedia. About six months ago, I made a video called How to Analyze and EQ Any Room Step-by-Step -step Tutorial, and it was done here in this sanctuary. So this sanctuary is about 90 feet long, 68 feet wide. It's got a line array system left and right, and we have a subwoofer that's over in our drum booth. Now, in that last video, a lot of people were interested in it because I think you're looking for solutions just like I am. Uh, we used our X32 from Behringer, and it's a console, and I used my Sonarworks RTA microphone. Now, if you don't have access to that stuff, a lot of that was done in that video, you still had to find a solution. Well, I figured I need to make a follow-up video for that video, but I wanted it to be significant. And so today, what I'm showing you is the Arc Studio from IK Multimedia, and this is actually an all-in-one solution. So when you open up the box, you're gonna get this box right here that basically has a left and right, in and out. It's got a connection for your computer, it's got a power supply, and then it also comes with your RTA microphone. So everything you need to correct your room all in one package. So instantly I'm thinking, okay, in that last video, if you felt like that wasn't for you because you don't have a Behringer X32, what can I recommend going forward? So in today, we're gonna put this thing to the test because when you look this thing up, what it claims to do is to correct project studios, recording studios, home theater systems, it doesn't say anything about giant auditoriums or sanctuaries. So I thought what would be fun is if I take this thing and we're gonna put it to the test and we're gonna use this to room correct this sanctuary. And like I said, everything you need is in the box. And the best thing about this ARC Studio is that once you have your measurements, everything is going to be downloaded to your box so that you don't have to have your computer plugged in 24 seven. There is a plug-in version that goes with this. So if you wanna make use of the plug-in, you can. But essentially, this is gonna come from my audio source, which in this sanctuary today is our Behringer X32. I'm gonna go out the main left and right into this box. And then from this box, we're gonna go out to our speakers. If you wanna check the chapters in this video, feel free to jump around as you need to. Again, my name is Chris Green. I wanna encourage you to hit the like and subscribe buttons for more videos just like this. Let's get started checking out the ARC Studio in the Sanctuary. So a few housekeeping things. First of all, rest assured the X32's firmware has been updated. Many of you were probably losing sleep at night because you saw that we had like version one loaded on the X32. Everything has been updated. If you do any firmware update, this is just like general rule in life, make sure you have a backup. So if you're X32, you can back up everything to a flash drive because it definitely will wipe everything out if you're going from like version one to version three or version four, et cetera. So the firmware has been updated. Also, number two, if you're in a live sound environment and you're doing any of this room corrective EQ stuff, you need to make sure that you have your matrix set up or matrices set up for your different outputs. Now we're very simple here. We have our main system, which is everything people are hearing in the sanctuary. We have a couple of lobby speakers in our church lobby that's feeding. Like if you're in the lobby for some reason, you'll be able to hear the mix out there. And we also have a feed that's going to our camera. Now the feed that's going to our camera is mainly just the preacher's microphone, just in case something goes wonky with our recording. We've got a backup for that. But in the previous video, everything I was doing was on the main bus. You don't wanna put your EQ for your room correction on your main bus, because if you put it on your main bus, it will also affect your different outputs. So the lobby is being fed from the main output. The camera audio is being fed from the main output. I don't want my room EQ, I don't want any of this corrective stuff happening on anything other than what's happening in the room. So make sure you have a matrix set up. We now have matrix one and two is feeding our main system. Matrix three is our lobby. Matrix four is our camera setup. So we got all that running. Anything you do to your main output bus, that's gonna affect everything in your mix, no matter where you're at. But the matrix feeds off of the main output and you can definitely EQ the matrix. All right, the first thing out of the box, you get this basically giving you a detailed step of what we're working through. The first thing we need to do is register and download our software. Then we're gonna be hooking up our computer and our RTA microphone to do our analysis. But by the end, as you can see, picture number four, we're essentially just going to have our audio source, which for many of you might be your audio interface. 
or for here, it's going to be our console or our mixer. That's going to go into our Arc Studio box. And then from our Arc Studio box, it's going to our monitors, or in this situation, a PA system. All right, here we have the Arc Studio. This box is essentially what's going to go after our audio interface, but right before our speakers. So as you can see, we have two inputs here for our audio. We have a left and right input, and we have a left and right output. We have a USB port, which will just be used for when we're connecting it to our computer. Essentially, the computer software is going to tell the box what it needs to do. And then we have our power supply right here. On the front, you simply just have a button, and that button is labeled correction. So if you engage it, you will be able to hear everything going into effect, or you can disengage, bypass it. If things are going wrong, you need to turn this off to simply hit the front. It will allow audio to pass through without doing any sort of damage. We've got our USB cable. We've got a nice little microphone clip. These are super handy for these RTA mics because they are rather small. As you can see, we have our microphone here. It's significantly smaller and more lightweight than the Sonarworks one, but this will get the job done. All right, last thing in the box is your power supply. You're also gonna have all of these fancy plugs. So if you're not in the United States and you need one of these pronged outlets, you've got this right here. All right, now that I've got everything out of the box, I'm gonna step over to the laptop and get it plugged in. You'll be able to see on screen everything that I'm seeing from downloading the software, and getting it up and running. All right, so there's a card inside the box that has all of your registration information. I won't be showing that on this video. Just go to ikregister.com. Basically, I wanna register my product and download what it's got. All right, we're open up ARC for analysis. On the screen here, it says, welcome to ARC system. Room analysis, DAW, plugin, and a standalone application to control an ARC Studio device. Subsystem will guide you through the analysis process. Next. Okay, microphone selection. Yes, we've got the ARC MEMS mic model. All right, so I want to take a break and just show you real quick what's going on in the console, just in case you have any questions. Channel one, this is our pastor's mic. I'm actually using that as a lapel mic right now. It is not being fed into the main speakers, so it is not coming out of these speakers. It is only going to the camera that I'm using to record. On channel 16, this is where we have our RTA microphone. I've got it about at Unity. I don't have any of it coming through our main bus whatsoever, as far as what you're hearing out of the speakers. We don't want to hear the RTA mic in the room. We don't want to have any EQ engaged whatsoever. We don't want to have any of the effects. We don't want it to be coming through any of our monitors. But we do have 48 volt phantom power engaged and we are getting a healthy amount of gain going to the signal. You can hear me speaking right now, even though the microphone is in our listening position, it is picking up my voice. So whenever you're testing, make sure you're not doing any talking that could mess with your results. Now on the main, bus. I'm also bypassing the EQ and any sort of compression, anything like that. We don't want to have that happening whatsoever. And you should be hearing the sub as well. On our aux channels, aux one and two, the stereo pair is coming from the headphone jack that is on my laptop. So this cable right here, it is going into aux input one and two. And as you can see, aux one and two also has no EQ, no effects being engaged just a healthy amount of gain as well. So that's the setup on the console. All right, so here we are with the ARC4 analysis software. As you can see, my output device is set to my external headphones. This is the cable that's running out of my laptop into AUX1 and 2 that is on the console. See output left, output right. My sample rate is 48,000 hertz. My input device, this is whatever you're using to plug in your RTA microphone. If you have an audio interface like the Scarlett, you can have these two set up as well. By and large, your setup, if you're doing this at home with a mixing studio or recording studio, it will be much simpler than this chaotic sanctuary environment. But if you can handle it this way, you'll be able to handle it for sure at home. My input is channel 16 on the board. That is where the microphone is plugged in. We've got buffer size at 128. Microphone signal, if I clap my hands, you can see it is certainly healthy there. 
Now this next section here, you have an option to set up what kind of studio are you mixing for? What type of uh, analysis are you doing? The largest environment that they have available is the movie studio slash home theater. Obviously this is not a movie studio home theater, but we're acting like it is. Maybe in the future, IK Multimedia will add in auditorium or sanctuary. I'm sure this will be a decent result no matter what. So this is the largest option they have. I'm gonna go with Movie Studio. If you want to, I'd probably maybe go with the Project Studio. This can be most of you that are just sitting at a table. Use the diagrams to kind of find which one will suit your needs best. I'm gonna go with Home Theater, we'll hit Next. I'm gonna make sure the microphone is at the correct position and height. Now, since we're here in the sanctuary, you're gonna see me walking around. This will be like time sped up as I'm moving the microphone. If the larger the venue you're in, obviously the more microphone cable you're gonna have to have. I believe I've got enough slack that I can make these movements. If you've done this with the Sonarworks process before, it's gonna be a lot of moving. I think this one has 21 different positions that we're gonna be testing. I do have it at when I'm standing, it's about at my ear height and it's pointed straight for the pulpit, about as close to the middle as I can. Obviously I'm not doing crazy measurements here, but you can be as detailed as you want to be in your own environment. All right, this next step option here, next step in the process, we're gonna play a test, and this is just making sure that the playback level is sufficient. The microphone preamp, you need to make sure you got your hand ready to turn it up or down as needed. You can hear my voice coming through. You can see it on the screen there being picked up on the input level. But if I hit play test, you should hear sounds coming through your speakers. So if you have monitors at home, here with the PA system, you're gonna hear it coming through the left and right. And then we just wanna look at the input level and I wanna get it in the correct zone, but I don't wanna get it too high. I don't want any distortion happening. So let me hit play test and then I will adjust the preamp gain as needed. Good. All right, we'll go next. Now it's asking me, do I want to go quick or advanced? Easily for YouTube. I could probably do the quick, but I'm going to go advanced. This will be 21 spots. It will take much longer. I highly encourage you if you're at home and you're doing this for your mixing environment, go with 21. It'll take more time, but we need to get as much measuring as possible. So here we go. Next. The room analysis will help you measuring seven points taken at three different height layers for a total of 21 points. Approximate heights you will need. 15 centimeters, six inches below ear level, at ear level, and then above ear level. Wow. Okay, so I've got mine on a boom stand. It definitely has plenty of range. I can move this thing up and down as needed. I'm gonna be doing this for now, I'm gonna go with a standing position. Typically when we're doing music, when the band's playing, everybody's standing on their feet. We'll see what happens, okay? Measure layer one. Turn off correction. Okay, so on the front of the Arc Studio, there is an orange indicator light to tell you if it is correcting or not. It'll show you this. So right now it is disengaged. If I hit on, you can see it is on. We wanna make sure it is off for now. Set the microphone six inches below ear level. Follow the points as indicated on the image. The mic position does not need to be precise and approximate will work fine. The challenging thing is I'm in the sanctuary, so I'm gonna have to be moving quickly. Hopefully the software will just continue measuring and give me time to where I need to be. Point number one needs to be, looks about right in the middle. So we have several locations here. It looks like I need to go one pew up. We're gonna call this the middle pew. This is one pew up and this is one pew back. And we need to be six inches below ear level. Okay, so now we're at the part where I need to just choose an icon. So I'm gonna choose this for my speaker icon. I don't see line arrays as an option, but that would be fine. The name I'm gonna call uh, Church Sanctuary. I'll hit save. All right. Your room analysis has been saved and is ready for use in the ARC4 correction plugin. 
click quit to close arc or click new analysis to take another. I think I'm done. Quit. Let's go to arc four. Open up. This is a different application. So we did the measurement already. Now we just need to load our preset. We have our drop down menu or the measurement. I'm going to change it from neutral to church sanctuary. Wowzers. Obviously, our subwoofer is pretty loud. It's got the before, which is a ton of low end targets. Obviously, this sort of flat line. And then it says after, it's going to be this deal right here, which I need to listen to it. So I want to store it to my Arc Studio. Click store. It is going to sync with the box right here. It's got a flashing light where it says correction, it means that it is loading. Now, what we need to do is plug this into our system. So now we need to come out of the X32. Instead of it just going out the main left and right, we are going to insert the Arc Studio. The only way I can describe this to you in a YouTube format, and I hate that I have to do this, I wish there's, I wish there's some sort of technology where you could hear what I'm hearing in the room as I'm hearing it, but I'm going to play the audio recording, which was the song that was recorded here in this room from a Sunday service. And I'm going to manipulate the EQ so that you basically hear what I'm hearing in the room. And then you'll see it have the correction turned on. And by and large, this is the difference that I'm hearing. I have anything you require. It's almost like you have a blanket covering your speakers and you don't even know it. All this clarity comes into play without it being harsh. Like this is not, I don't believe this is adding treble to anything, but what it's doing is those low mids that we often love the sound of like that snare drum, the bass guitar, or the kick drum. We love to hear that stuff in the room, but if we're not careful, those things are gonna mud up our mix. So when this thing popped on, I still feel the kick drum. I still feel the bass drum, but what I'm getting is a clarity that I didn't have before. So this thing is going to stay on our system long-term. I'll give you an updated video should anything happen in the future, but I can wholeheartedly make this recommendation to you that if you watched my previous video and you're like, I don't have an X32, I don't have the Sonarworks RTA mic, I need like an all-in-one solution, check this thing out from IK Multimedia, the Arc Studio. Now, the process of getting the measurements, you can do the 21 spots like I did. I'm sure that made a difference, but if you're in a time crunch, I would feel okay just going through with the seven steps. It was kind of weird that, like it's doing this star pattern thing, so you gotta move it up and then back, and then you do the left side, and then you do the right side, and then you have to go back on the left. I felt like that was a little odd because if, <laughs> I guess if I were designing the software, there may be a justification for this, but why not just you start on your left, then go three feet to your right, three feet to your right, three feet to your right. It kind of felt silly because when I'm going on the star pattern, I feel like there's some psychology behind it. And it made me skeptical. I was like, I'm doing all these different heights. I'm doing the star pattern with the microphone. Is this setting me up for some sort of placebo effect? Like, is this just gonna end up adding a bunch of treble to my mix? but that was not the case. And that's what shocked me. When it turned on, I hit that correction button, everything just got better. So wholeheartedly check this thing out. There's gonna be links in the description for all the stuff that I'm using in this video. Also go check out the previous video if you're looking for another solution for your room correction. There'll be more videos on this room in the future as we talk about the subwoofer, the electronic drums and so forth. If you have any questions at all, please reach out in the comment section. I'll do my best to get to them as soon as possible. If you haven't already, hit the like and subscribe buttons for more videos just like this and videos on recording music. My name is Chris Green. Oh, thank you so much for watching this video and I'll see you in the next one. All right, bye.